Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 25th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Well, it's hard to even find the right words to describe how great of a day of hawk watching it was today, especially since yesterday we had a decent flight of sharp-shinned hawks, but the lake breeze pushed all the broad-winged hawks around us. And so looking at Derby Hill and seeing that they had 19,000 broad wings yesterday, and knowing that those are birds that we're not going to get for the season. And even if we had good winds today, would we pick up a big flight? So going into this morning, um, I was a little unsure of how things would turn out, but it just ended up being perfect conditions, and there were a huge number of birds. So to give away the spoiler, we had a total of over 15,000 migrants today, including more than 12,500 broad-winged hawks, over 2,000 turkey vultures, we had 10 golden eagles, so just a completely spectacular day, and uh, this was the biggest hawk watching day I've ever had, and in a way I'm thankful that I didn't get a day like this until I've had so many seasons of experience. This is my 10th season as a full-time hawk counter. This is my uh, fourth spring here at Braddock Bay, so to finally get a day like this where um, I finally have enough skill to uh, do a good job counting it, but also to appreciate how rare days like this are. It was just really great. And thank you to everyone who came out today and helped to call out birds and spot birds and just uh, a really fun day to spend together at the platform. Here's a view from the platform in the morning when I got out and I was really happy to see that there was sunshine because looking at the forecast for today, um, over the past few days, they made it sound like maybe there would be showers and then there would be thunderstorms. So I was a little unsure if we would even get much of a raptor flight. But seeing that there were uh, blue skies with just a light cloud cover, I knew that that would generate the thermals that we needed to see large numbers of hawks. And here's a photo taken from the boardwalk. And the wind started out kind of light, and actually it went to a northeast lake breeze for a little bit, which had me worried. But then eventually the southerly winds took over and brought us a big flight. I was happy to get a nice look at this group of ruddy ducks. And this red-winged blackbird posed nicely for photos as well. This Cooper's hawk gave a nice look as it went by, so it's got a bigger head, and we can see that those outer tail feathers are a little shorter. And just after seeing so many sharp-shinned hawks, when you see a Cooper's hawk, they just uh, they flap slower. They're just bigger birds overall. We had our first of season green heron, one of many first of years that we got today. Here we have an adult broad-winged hawk passing over fairly low early, uh, and. Most of the early flight was relatively low, um, not this low, but good looks at them. And then as the day went on, they got fairly high by, the, by around midday. Here we have a really nice looking light morph rough-legged hawk that migrated over. Here we have a kettle of broad wings. And that term kettle just means a group of hawks that are circling together. And you can see that we had really nice looks and the lighting was good. And it really gave us a nice chance to pick through them and look for other species. Um, when we have a group like this, we're always looking for Swainson's hawk, which could be mixed in. And we're also looking for dark morph broad-winged hawks, which are quite rare and would be really exciting to see. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't have either of those today. Here's another big kettle of broad-winged hawks with a couple of turkey vultures mixed in, the bigger ones here. And uh, photos can't really capture the uh, what you truly see with binoculars when you're seeing these birds swirling, but uh, this might give you an idea of part of a huge group. Here we have an immature golden eagle. So remember, most of the golden eagles we see are immature, and almost all immatures have white patches in their wings 
and a white base to the tail as well. So um, whenever you're seeing eagles that are real splotchy, white and brown underneath, those are immature bald eagles. When you see a golden eagle, they just look so clean because the white is organized into these nice patches. So um, keep that in mind. And also their heads are really small. It looks only a fraction of the size of the tail, whereas bald eagles have larger heads. Here we have two golden eagles flying together, leading a group of broad-winged hawks, which are all these smaller ones. This golden eagle gave us a great look as it passed over fairly low. Here we have another mixed group of broad-winged hawks and turkey vultures. Here's another golden eagle. And here's yet another golden eagle. We had a few sandhill cranes throughout the day for a total of four. And this was one of the birds of the day for me. This is a dark morph red-tailed hawk. And uh, we had one of these actually a few weeks ago. And these birds are a bit of a mystery because the eastern population of red-tailed hawks isn't known to have a dark morph. So the question is, are these dark morph birds coming from the western population? Or is this an unknown dark morph of the northern subspecies, which is Abieticola? So uh, definitely interesting to see these birds, and it's something we don't see very often. Some seasons we don't see any. Like I said, this year this is the second one, and we've gotten pretty good looks at both of them. So definitely a highlight of the day for me. Here's another golden eagle high overhead. Remember, see these clean white patches in the wings? That screams golden eagle and also the relatively small head. Most of the morning we were seeing small numbers of turkey vultures, but around midday the number of turkey vultures really increased. So here we have a, a big group, and uh, we had one hour that where I think we had over 1,200 turkey vultures. And here we have a peregrine falcon that looks a little tattered and worn. And you might wonder how I count so many birds on a day like today. So these are all of the clickers I was using. Uh, if we start at the bottom left with the hand clickers, the silver one I was using for broad-winged hawks and counting by tens. So one click for every 10 birds. So it says 95, so that represents 950 broad-winged hawks. For the pink one, I was using that for turkey vultures, had 82. Green one I was using for immature bald eagles, had six. For this uh, middle counter of six, five red tails, one red shoulder, no Cooper's hawks, 34 sharp shinned hawks, three northern harriers, one American kestrel. And then this back clicker, actually the number one clicker broke, so we can't use that anymore. Um, four adult bald eagles, and then these other four I just use for whatever I need. Um, today I was using this one for osprey. And then the other ones I didn't really use, but let's say I had a, a merlin or a peregrine or a rough leg that I didn't uh, want to put directly into Dunkadoo because I didn't have time to pull out my phone and type it in. I might just click it on one of those and just remember that that's what it represents. And people always ask if I have them labeled, and no, I just know um, because uh, I usually use one set of six clickers, um, and I always use them for the same species. Just on these busier days do I get out the second set of six or five and a half or five. About 1 p.m. we had the lake breeze kick in and by 1.30 the flight lines had been pushed inland and we weren't seeing any birds. So at 2 p.m. we moved into Frisbee Hill to see if we could find anything. On the walk in I had my first of year yellow warbler. And the osprey pair was up on their cell phone tower. We weren't really seeing anything migrating at Frisbee Hill, so at 4 o'clock I moved back over to the platform hoping that maybe there would be some sharp-shinned hawks or other things migrating right along the shoreline. We had this mystery object floating in the water and we didn't know, is it a turtle, is it something man-made, is it an alien spacecraft? So Mike Tetlow went down to check it out, but uh, he came back saying that he thought it was man-made, but that's all we could figure out. But personally, I think it's somehow related to this big wormhole that was out over the lake. Hmm. Here we have a northern rough-winged swallow, one of our two brown swallows, the other one being bank swallow. 
And the last migrant raptor of the day, just after 6 p.m., was this short-eared owl that circled over the bay and then continued east. And we occasionally see short-eared owls, but they're always a fun highlight to see. And the reason I stayed so late was because there was a thunderstorm moving in that ended up hitting about 7.30. I was hoping that the winds might pick up from the southwest ahead of the storms, but they ended up just being too late in the day and there was nothing happening, so I left at 6.30. And here's a photo I took before I left where you can see the storms beginning to move in from the west. And if we take a look at eBird, from the platform in the morning had 80 species. Ended up with about 90 species total for the day. At Frisbee Hill, I had 33 species total. And then back at the platform, I just put in a partial checklist. And if we take a look at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals for the day, we had one black vulture, which was actually towards the end of the day. Um, I spotted it from the platform, but it was pretty far away in over the parkway. 2,089 turkey vultures, 9 osprey, 62 bald eagles, 30 northern harriers, 189 sharp-shinned hawks, 4 cooper's hawks, 3 red-shouldered hawks, 12,555 broad-winged hawks, 57 red-tailed hawks, 2 rough-legged hawks, 10 golden eagles, 10 american kestrels, 3 merlins, two peregrine falcons for a grand total of 15,027 migrating raptors today. And if you really want the full summary of what happened today, I encourage you to check out the hawk count report. I wrote quite a bit. Um, it's good when you have these big flights just to kind of document the weather conditions pretty well and what happened with the flight so people in the future can look and see what the conditions were on that day and how the flight ended up. I know that I like to go back and look at the big days from the past and see what the exact conditions were, and I use that to help forecast um, upcoming days. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. We had quite a few new species for the season today. Blue-gray gnatcatcher, cliff swallow, eastern kingbird, green heron, chimney swift, yellow warbler, and great crested flycatcher. And if we take a look at the forecast, tomorrow looks overcast with a high near 50, winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So not the greatest conditions, um, but the winds, winds are only moderate. They're not overly strong like we'll have the next few days. So um, yeah, I'm thinking we'll have light, maybe moderate migration. Should be, should be birds around, so not terrible conditions and still fairly warm. For Wednesday, we're looking at cloudy early, then partly cloudy and windy. High is only 41. Winds west-northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So cold with strong winds from the west-northwest probably won't be very much happening. And for Thursday, we're looking at mainly sunny with the high in the mid-40s. Winds northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Little typo there. And uh, again probably won't be much happening. Cold with strong northwest winds. Um, wouldn't expect to see too much. All right, that's it for today, and what a day it was. Like I said at the beginning, this is just a really special day to have so many hawks, and I think every hawk watcher knows that you only get a few good days every season, and maybe you get a day like this just once every couple years. So um, you just really need to take advantage of it and, and enjoy them when they come. And it's really just one of the greatest spectacles of bird migration to see so many broad-winged hawks and turkey vultures migrating and then the fun of getting to spot uh, all the golden eagles. And it was just a really fun day at the platform. So um, yeah, thank you to everyone who came out and helped to spot birds. And if you missed today's big flight, the good news is we still have some adult broad-winged hawks yet to come, and we still have all of the juveniles yet to come. So maybe we'll get a couple more days this season where we're seeing thousands and thousands of birds. So if you missed today, there's still hope to see big hawk flights over the next month. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. 
This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.